I don't care if I gotta put it on a lot of myself, it's gonna be worn again somehow, some way. Hey loves, welcome back to the channel. My name is Taylor. If you're new here, welcome. So thank you all for joining my video today. We're gonna to be testing some viral TikTok makeup products and makeup techniques. And I'm very excited to be doing this video today because I have been truly uninspired in terms of creating makeup content. So this kind of resurged my interest in makeup again. And so without further ado, if you wanna see what this video consists of, keep on watching. There's been a lot of buzz around eyebrow products and one in particular that caught my eye was the NYX Eyebrow Glue. I use glue to shape my eyebrow too. If you're someone like me, you have very unruly eyebrows probably. My eyebrows can be very unruly. I haven't permed them or anything like that. So I always wanna make sure that I have some type of product that will keep it in place before I put my eyebrow product. And that is what I did with the Eyebrow Glue by NYX. So I did use it before putting on my eyebrows, but then I realized Wait a minute, this is probably a product that some people would like to, that ideally would like to use afterwards to keep all their hard work in place. Well, since I'm somebody that doesn't even really like filling their eyebrows anymore, I pretty much have found loopholes around doing that just because it takes so long in my makeup routine. I just decided, you know, this would be perfect for use for actually gluing my eyebrow hairs in place before putting on my product so that my eyebrows can do already look the way I want it to look. And all I have to do is clean it up and we can go. So I use this before, like I said, you have the option of using this before and after or after. I thought it was more ideal for me to shape my eyebrows in place and to hold it in place. On the topic of eyebrows, it really seems like the way in which uh, eyebrow trends are perceived now these days have changed drastically and I, I can't help but see like you know when I'm scrolling down Instagram reels for inspiration for my own reels there's a lot of before like how you you know makeup comparing and contrasting of makeup trends from 2016 to now and one of the most drastic differences between 2016 and years past and now is how we do our eyebrows it's like we no longer need that what they consider an Instagram brow and the they I just mean the overall makeup community now simplicity is what what is desired what is most popular right now um or the bushy brow because people are like finally embracing their bushy brow and going to maybe see your thread eyebrow thread girl a lot less i know i have not seen her since we've been entered into a panoramic so i've seen a lot of products to help you simply just enhance your natural brow and one of those being nyx lift and snatch eyebrow pencil In addition to the eyebrow glue, I also wanted to see what their lift and snatch was about. Now, I remember when this product kind of first began to just spark popularity among the makeup community. I feel like I could not scroll past two stories without seeing people review this. I couldn't scroll past two TikToks without seeing people review it. So I definitely, definitely wanted to try it. And I feel like it's very light. Um, it allows you to get that perfect, precise hair-like stroke. It's so lightweight and the tip itself is so thin. It's like I couldn't tell for a second if I was actually seeing a difference in my eyebrow. And maybe it's hard to tell on camera because of my lighting situation. But I know here in person, in my mirrors, in my mirrors and in the lighting in my room, I could tell like, oh, like this is really a tint. And that is what it claims to be as well. The entire title of this is the Lift and Snatch Brow Tint Pen. And it, def it definitely tinted my eyebrow in a natural way. I think we're right now, I've been seeing, a, we're in an era where people just wanna take care of their eyebrows themselves. People do their own brow elimination at home. People are, I think brow elimination and perm your eyebrows, kind of the same thing. But basically people are doing their own tint, doing their own microblading. Like people are doing things at home because that's just, you know, the phase that we're in. You know, we wanna limit interactions to definitely slow the, slow the spread of the C word. So we're just taking this upon ourselves. And I think this next eyebrow pin it definitely helps you achieve that and like you know in a more simplistic way in a very temporary way if that's not something you want to commit to because i know that's something i don't really want to commit to i did get this pen in the shade brown because there was no there was no more espresso left for some odd reason but honestly you can't even really tell the difference like it still looks pretty dark in my eyebrows and so it just blended in naturally i also included um, just like some swatches of how it looks on the back of my hand to show you how thin those strokes are and so like to me and so like to me it's gonna be nearly impossible to make your eyebrows look super duper bushy if, that, if that's the look you're going for they actually have another product that will give you that bushy brow I can't think of what it's called at the top of my head at the moment but I will be sure to include a little screenshot if that's what you're going for but for me I still like my eyebrows to look 
manicured if you will and I still like for it to look nice and shapely and I don't think the bushy eyebrow look, looks good on me naturally so I do like to have it nice and uh, like a like a medium sized look but anyway basically guys I don't even do anything with my eyebrows these days that is all I ever do is just put hair like strokes in it and then I clean it up with concealer and I go on with my day I'm all about reducing the time I spend doing my eyebrows because there's so much more fun to be had with makeup than just been just doing eyebrows. Moving away from all things eyebrows, moving into the face, something that I've also been seeing a lot, if not among, you know, different TikTokers, but just among like, you know, the top beauty gurus. I've seen a lot of viral hacks and makeup hacks on TikTok. One of them definitely includes like this, this lipstick thing where you kind of like, I guess use lipstick as a blush for underpainting and stuff like that. I've seen that this underpainting trend has really taken on a life of its own. And so a viral trend, of course, right now on TikTok, and that's also just changed the, the makeup landscape is the new underpainting method. Now it's probably not 100% new. It's probably been out for some time now. People have probably always used this method, but it's definitely research and popularity. And now there's a lot more videos with people saying, oh, you know, instead of doing your makeup this way, do it that way. And so th this is one of the ways that I've seen a lot of people um, test out and suggest because, you know, it kind of just gives you a different, you know, it, a different feel with how you layer on your product. I decided to to help me out with this because one something I've also seen a lot of people use with underpainting is Rare Beauty products. So I know that Rare Beauty hit the market about maybe a year ago. Yeah, I think a year ago, you know, in, until the pandemic, people were trying out Rare Beauty products. At the time, I didn't know how I felt, but then I decided, you know what, F it. I really want to try their their blush. And if you all don't know, Rare Beauty is a beauty brand by Selena Gomez. And if I'm not mistaken, they are going to be expanding into skincare. I might be imagining things because everybody's jumping on the skincare bandwagon. So I don't know, but stay tuned for that either way. So... I decided originally when I went into Sephora to just get the blush, but I decided I wanted to try other products from the brand as well. I did pick up a foundation, but unfortunately the foundation was way too dark. So never mind that we're only focusing on the concealer and the blush. For underpainting, you're essentially putting on your foundation last. So I picked up the Rare Beauty Concealer. This one is in the shade 470C. Um, um, I'm never really too particular about the undertone of my concealers just as long as they're like this medium bright shade because I still like a nice highlight under my eye. That's just one trend that I'm never going to not partake in. Another thing, the placement of your concealer has changed now. Um, the placement of concealer has, you know, has changed among the makeup community. Before we would definitely just pile it on like a big swoosh, a big check sign up under your eye. Now we no longer do that. Now we've seen from professional experts that have come on TikTok and other platforms say, hey, you actually are making your under eye crease. So I've seen from a lot of makeup experts on TikTok that it is more effective for you to kind of do like this try close to, you know begin close to your nose and do like a triangle shape upwards and then also just to lift up your eye shape even more um to come right up underneath the eye along the edge which you see me doing here and then blend it out and i have been doing that for some time now and i've noticed a difference the shape of my face looks all together like i have been working to not make my face look like it's dragging down but to more so look like it's like you know rounded out and you know what i'm saying so that's how I begin off with that, which is like something I've seen a lot on TikTok. And I'm going to try to include some references in here so that, you know, if you're interested in some of these techniques and I'm not doing a good job explaining it, I want you to be able to find these sources as well for yourself because they've helped me a lot. I've mentioned this a lot in my videos, but somebody that I've seen do this a lot is Jackie Ina. I have seen her use Rare Beauty Liquid Blush a lot in her underpainting techniques. And I thought, you know what, this is the day that I'm going to try it. And as you all can see in this clip here, I, yeah, less is definitely more. I use a bit too much on accident <laughs> and it, I don't know, I feel like I struggled just a little bit, but, but I will say, um, I do like the way that my blush did come out. I feel like I didn't have to use as much powder blush on top because I already had that under hint of it underneath. Um, you know, once that was all complete, I just went on top with my ABH foundation. I use that one all the time. I would have used the Rare Beauty foundation as well to complete the whole underpainting method, but I did not find, well, the one I had is too dark and I'm actually, once I complete this video, on my way to return it. So that's what I decided to do for underpainting. Um, use some of those products because I've seen a lot of that, um, surface on TikTok and Reels, even though TikTok Reels, same thing. You know, if you're like me, you kill two birds with one stone. You film one video for both platforms and you just do what you gotta do. 
tip. Back into the NYX brand, um, I did pick up just a few products from NYX. And the third one that I wanted to try out was this brown eyeliner. I think a lot of people switch out their dark black matte liners for a more subtle brown, a more softer brown, which actually is way less intimidating. If you're like me, you've never gotten good at doing wing eyeliner. I've never gotten good at it. and So I've been doing my makeup for some time. I've been into makeup for forever, so it seems. And so I've never been able to truly master doing a wing liner. I don't know that I'll ever be able to, but I know that that isn't like, you know, determine if I'm super good at makeup or not. There's lots of things that people aren't good at. And unfortunately, just winged eyeliner isn't one of those things for me. However, when I'm using this brown eyeliner, I feel like I'm capable of doing anything. Really and truly, I did a look yesterday that I wish I had this brown eyeliner for. It would have looked so much better. But I decided to use it today because I have a lot of brown in this look. I think brown is very prevalent or prevalent. I really don't know how you pronounce that word. But I think it is very consistent in the look that I have on today. And I knew that just using a brown eyeliner instead of a black would definitely soft, continue that soft look because... I, I'm, I hope I'm giving y'all spring with this. Like I'm trying to, you know, you know, fall into spring. Whatever. I try to be cute with that. But I, I, I wanted this look to be soft because it is officially spring. It doesn't look like it where I'm at currently, but in a lot of places there's beautiful weather. So I wanted to keep the look nice and soft, and I knew that a brown eyeliner is for it. So I think this spring, now's the time to really like swap out, and especially just based off TikTok trends with so many people reaching for brown. That is your sign to swap out your traditional black liner, even if you're doing a wing, even if you're not, even if you're just lining for uh, uh, for lash placement purposes. I think that that brown will look a lot softer. All the face products that I purchased pretty much have been, you know, applied to my face at this point. So something else that I got that I know, you know, if anybody's watching this video and you've gotten this far into the video, I know that you've seen it. I know that you've seen these lip glosses, which people are saying are duplicates for the Fenty Beauty lip glosses have gone viral. I know you've seen that. And so I honestly have had my eye on these for a long time. I'm not sure exactly how long these lip glosses have been on the market. I would have to say, personally, for the past few months, I've been like teeter tottering on the idea of buying them. Should I, should I not? Because I already own quite a few lip glosses from the Fenty Beauty collection. And I'm like, you know, I really like them. And sometimes I'm just, I get into this mood where I'm like, why do I need three pink nude lip glosses that are only slightly different from one another? Why do I need that? And sometimes I'm like, hell yeah, I need that. I need variety, I need options in my life. I have done you all the favor of swatching them and trying them on for you right here in this video. That I the first shade that I tried on was the shade Silk and it is this pink shade and I'm showing you all the doe foot applicator that this lip gloss comes with. I'm totally surprised that this lip gloss had that. I hadn't exactly seen anybody like take the lip gloss out of its packaging and truly show what, the, what it looked like and its applicator and all this different aspects on TikTok exactly maybe those videos i haven't come across but i just hadn't seen it so i thought you know wow i didn't even know it looked like this but also and that is exactly how the fenty beauty applicator looks as well it is huge it's doe foot and you definitely get a lot um on the the applicator just in one little dip and i would say that that's the same case for this lip gloss as well so, um i think this is a very beautiful pink if i didn't mention this one is in the shade silk and so you know i actually Feel like I don't have that many pink lip glosses. This one is more, this is more is less nude, and it's this one is like an in between a nude and a mauve, and I, I like the way it looks on me. Um, I don't think that pink lip gloss looks too bad. I felt like you know these aren't super shiny, so of course if you want to add more to it, I'm not somebody that needs a whole lot of shine. I feel like I'm I'm fine with the standard shine I get from my lip glosses, like because I'm gonna have on a mask anyway, so nobody's gonna see it besides you and Instagram and TikTok. The next one that I tried on as well uh, was the shade Reef. Now this one is a lighter pink. This one is almost like a powdery pink and there is a, a difference. I don't know if it's showing up on camera. I'm a brown skinned girl. Sometimes lip glosses tend to look the same on me even though I can see the sheer difference. But this one is more of like a powdery pink and I like that because if I, if I want to really make it known that I'm having a pink moment, this would be the lip gloss I reach for because it's so much lighter so you can tell that it's pink on a brown skin baddie such as myself. The next one that I tried on, this one was more glittery. It had more of a glitter base to it. That's also evident from the packaging. This one was called Moon that I'm trying on currently. And I thought, ooh, okay. This one is pretty as well. I don't have very many. Actually, that's one thing I don't have is very many glosses with like a glitter base to it. 
I feel like that's not something I reach for a lot because I do like the shine. Sometimes I feel like glitter takes away from the shine and that just might be my personal opinion. Other people may have different experiences, but that doesn't mean every now and then I don't want a little glitter. So I did enjoy this one as well. As I said, it was called Moon and I think, I think that's a great reflection of this gloss. It obviously shines like the moon. The next one that I tried on is called Stone and that's what I actually have on currently. Um, and so I like this one the best because it just matched my shadow. It matched my overall look. It was neutral, but it was still, it's like a, it's kind of like a, to me it's like a mix between like a mauve and an orange, but yet it's still like a neutral gloss that you can put on to, to just like bring out that hint of like color in your look if that's what you have. Like, you know, I got the whole blush thing going on. So I wanted, um, a gloss that really complimented that as well. The last one that I tried on was the shade Amber. And for some reason, you all, I thought I was gonna love this one, but I didn't love this one that much. It was a little too orangey for me. And maybe that's just because my overall look just, it probably just didn't compliment my overall look. But one thing about Taylor is if I bought it, I'm gonna make it work. And I spent my heart on coins on this. So somehow, some way, I'm gonna wear this again. I don't care if I gotta put it on a lot of myself, it's gonna be worn again somehow, some way. Overall, I really like these lip glosses and I wanna mention that the price point is super affordable. So I didn't even mention the name of these, but hopefully I'm putting up screenshots in this video. But this, these are the Maybelline Lifter glosses and the price point for these were about $7 per gloss. I did buy five of them, so I paid about $35 plus tax. To me, that is not bad at all. Some of us pay $35 for one individual lip gloss from these high-end brands that are sold at Sephora and Ulta. I have paid a pretty penny for, well, I think, yes, these and like these, like I mentioned earlier in the video, these are known as duplicates for the Fenty gloss. And I would say in color range, in consistency, and applicator, it does definitely compete as a duplicate of the Fenty gloss. Overall, I hope that you all enjoyed this video. I enjoyed doing this because I have not really been feeling makeup like that and I have definitely given up on creating makeup content, especially for YouTube. To definitely feel like there was no audience for it anymore. So this really resurged my love for makeup and creating content for that. So if you all enjoyed this video and just some of these trends, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more of it, of course, give it a thumbs up. So I'm encouraged to make more. Comment down below and don't forget to subscribe. I finally hit 100 subscribers and I'm very happy about that. I've been creating YouTube videos on and off, give or take, since 2018 or 2017. Yeah, from 2017, 2018. So finally just being able to hit that threshold and just, you know, finally see Three digits in my subscriber count make me really happy. So I would appreciate that continues to go continues to go up as I continue to just try to push out content. Also, if I'm not consistent on here, I'm definitely consistent on my Instagram account and trying to get into TikTok. So follow me there. Um, thank you all so much for watching. I love you. Stay beautiful and stay safe.